Hey y'all, you know what they say, April showers bringing new GP2040 CE releases. Yeah, I know, no one says that, but it is time, 0.7.8 is here, and I want to show you in this tutorial video how to upgrade to it across a few different controllers and a few different methods. So let's get started. A firmware update might sound scary, but if you follow this video, go through step by step, be careful, take your time, you can do it, and I'm going to show you some recovery steps, and if all else fails, just leave a message in the comments and I'll try and help you out within a couple days. Also, the folks on the GP2040CE Discord can be very helpful, so make sure you join there too. And I'm on there, so if you want to message me there, that works. Before we get into things, you're going to need just a few things to check off, a sanity checklist here. And first of all, you're going to want a PC. Now you can use a Windows PC, a Mac, or Linux. I'm going to show it with Windows because that's what I have. Uh, I know Linux takes a little additional setup, which is detailed over on the GP2040CE info site and I'll link that in the description. However, I'm not going to cover how to do it with Linux or Mac. Again, I don't have that. So you need that, a web browser, a USB cable to connect your controller, and make sure it's a data one. If you have only a charge one, you're not going to see it show up at all. And also, you're going to need to know what version or what variant of the firmware you need. So if you have, say, an 042, you want the 042 firmware, I'm going to show you how to find that. So don't worry, don't stress. All right, now we're ready to get started and we need to get into web config mode. What that is, is a web browser backend that lets us configure GP2040 to work the way we want. So it's really easy. There's two ways and the first one I prefer, which is you hold whichever is your start button and then you just plug in. Now, if you have a status screen like this one does, you're gonna notice that it has a web config mode display here. So that way it's a good confirmation. But if you have something that doesn't have a display, it's no problem, just do the same thing. Now there's an alternate way that this works. Let's just try this again. I'm gonna plug back in, so I'll be in regular controller mode. And once it's done, all I do is hold start and then what's equivalent to X and Y. So these top two punch buttons basically. Then it'll flip over to web config mode after five seconds. Now that our controller is in web config mode, let's go ahead and access the backend. To do that, just fire up a web browser, Edge, Chrome, Firefox, they all work. And then what you wanna do is go to HTTP, oh, if I could type, that would help, 192.168.72.1. All right, so once you hit that, make sure it doesn't do HTTPS, otherwise it's gonna sit and spin and never load. And it should look like this once it is. Now that we're in web config, we have a few things we want to do. The first is to figure out which variant of GP2040 CE that we want. Now, usually you'll probably continue using the same one you have. So for example, on this, I had the Open Core Zero version. And I'm gonna stick with that for this build, but if you have, especially like an 042, that shipped with, I think, 0.7.4, 0.7.5, I believe, and they then had their own variant of GP2040, you want to upgrade to that specific variant. And that will take some more detailed methods, which I'll go over later in the video. But for now, it's good to know that, yeah, I'm sticking with Open Core Zero for this, so that's all we need. All right, now there is a Get Latest Version button. We'll come back to this in a minute. What we want to do first is make a backup of everything. So what we do is just come to configuration and then data backup and restoration. Make sure everything is checked and then just hit save and it will save to your default downloads directory. So just make note of where it is and hold it in reserve in case you need to go back to 7.7 or whichever. So now that we have our backup, are we clear to go ahead and just flash this thing? Uh, no, let's wait a second because I really prefer, I know we've taken a backup, but it's always good to just go through everything in here and maybe take your own screenshots just to be safe. Usually, you know, these things are, will be fine if you just flash, but if you especially have some custom configurations, you just wanna make sure that you've made note of them. That way, you know, when you go to play after upgrading to 0.7.8, .8, 
you're not taken aback, not taken by surprise, and not you know going, oh, what happened? Well, the default settings got put in, that's all. So go through these pages, configuration, uh, peripheral mapping, for example, this USB host is for the pass-through on this guy, and then say add-ons, make sure the ones you want are enabled, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I try to at least have at least an idea in my head what needs to be changed if I default this thing. Uh, make sure you either have it up here or you have it, you know, screenshots or it's just somehow documented. Now that you have everything documented and backed up, it's time to go get your version of 0.7.8, your variant of it. So let's go back home. And the easiest way is this get latest version. So once you do that, it's going to, again, download it to your default downloads directory. And then that's where the file is going to live. Now, let's say you were going from you know, one variant to another. Then we need to go search, but I'll show you that later on. Now that we have the correct firmware for 0.7.8 downloaded, let's go ahead and start installing that. So the first thing we need to do is go up to this green reboot button and select USB boot cell. Once you do that, you're going to see probably something up here saying RPI, RP2, E drive maybe will come up on your computer. Your next step is pretty simple. All you want to do is you see that we have the backup file, make sure you have yours. Take this open core zero or whichever variant you have and drag and drop it down into the RPI RP2. It'll take some time to copy. Don't panic, just relax, sit back, let the magic happen. Your controller is going to reboot after this. After you copy that file over and the controller fully ingest it, that E drive or the RPI RP2 drive is going to disappear and your controller should reboot into normal mode. All right, my controller is back in regular controller mode, but the display is reversed. So I do need to make some changes, which is fine. We need to go back into web config anyway. So as you remember, just hold that start button, press these two buttons, or you can unplug it and hold start while you plug it back in. There we go, we're back into web config mode. Now I left the tab open, so all you really need to do, just come over, you can either hit F5 or just refresh the tab, and you should be back into regular web config mode. Now that we're back in web config, we can confirm, if we look over here, current version, we've successfully upgraded, and latest is matching that, so we are up to date as of this recording at least, so that is good. Next up, I want to just go ahead and quickly fix that little bug. So I'm just gonna go over to configuration, display configuration, and make sure this is set to flip. It was set to flip and mirror, which is not good. So there's that. And if there's any other settings you need to reconfig or re-verify, you can do that now. Just go into their configuration or settings as appropriate and you can get that fixed. Once you've made all the changes you want to make, go ahead and just go to reboot up here, this big green button, and then to controller. And you can close out the tab at this point, and you should be ready to go, ready to play whatever games you like. So that's the basic way to upgrade from a you know, relatively recent version to 0.7.8. Now, what if you have something way older, or you have you know, one variant and you need to change it to another? How do you do that? How do you do more advanced ones? I'm gonna show you now how to do that. Otherwise, if you've upgraded, then great. You know, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let's keep going though. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to basically do a format C on your GP2040 control board or controller. So we're going to just basically you know, flatten it and reinstall. For this segment, I'm going to assume two things. One, you know how to get into web config, and two, you know which variant of GP2040 CE that you need. So for number one and somewhat number two, you should be able to watch the previous section in this video and that should tell you. Sometimes though, if you're going from Pico to something else, you may have to do a little searching. I'll show you how to do that. So anyway, just fire up your favorite search engine here and turn then GP2040CE releases. And that should generally get you to this page, which I'm going to link below. So you should be fine either way. Let's go to the releases page. And then it will have like this V78 here. 
just click on that number. This is the easiest way for me. So when I just scroll down, you can see all the bug fixes and changes. And then there's two files you're going to need. The first one is this flash nuke. So let's go and download that. Simple click, there you go. And then I need the specific variant of GP2040CE for my control board. In this case, we're gonna be using the Open Core Zero. So I'll click there, and here we go. Once you're in web config mode, it's really easy to get into boot cell. So all you just do is, again, reboot and USB boot cell, and that should bring out that RPA RP2. Now, if you can't get into web config because it's just not loading, you're having fits, there are a couple other ways to do it. I'm gonna show you how. There's some alternate ways to get into boot cell mode. So the first one is, if you have a controller or control board that has a little boot button, all you do, disconnect, hold it down, plug it back in, and you should see that RPI, RP2 drive appear. Another way you can do this is, kind of like when you hold start to get into web config as you plug in, hold start, back, and up, then plug in. A little tricky, but it should work. And there you go, we have RPI, RP2. One final way to get into boot cell mode is hold back and X and Y. So it's sort of like doing web config, except you just do a different button. Hold that for five seconds and your drive should appear. Over in file manager, now we're ready to go. So we're gonna start by using this flash nuke. So all you do is drag this down to the E drive and you can use standard copy and paste, however you wanna do it, doesn't matter, just get it copied over. And it should do its thing and reappear within a few seconds. So as you can see, came back, so now I'm ready to flash my GP2040CE. All I'll do is once again, drag that over. This one does take a little bit longer, and again, just chill, wait, let it do its thing. And even after it's done and the drive disappears, I give it up to a minute just to kind of let it digest the file. Once that E drive is gone and it looks like everything's digested, you know, give it a minute, then you know, as you do, go back to web config. We can do the start plus X and Y variant. All right, now let's just go back into web configurator. Let's refresh this page since I kept the tab open. It should still work. And as you can see, now I'm at 0.7.8. From here, all you need to do is, you can either try manually set up all your settings, which is kind of tedious, but it's the most surefire way. Or if you're sure you have a good backup, you can go into configuration, data backup and restoration, hit load. And remember that file I made a while ago? I'm in the wrong directory, but if I go to downloads and then select this, open, it will load that file and try and restore settings. I'm not actually going to do that, but again, if you are sure this backup's going to work, basically if you're going from same variant to same variant, it should be okay. Uh, if you're not upgrading you know, too far, it should be okay. And again, you can always flash nuke and try again. The safest thing though is to manually configure everything once again. All right, whether you restore a copy of your settings or you set them up and you make sure to save them, once you're done, all you need to do is reboot, controller, and now you're ready to rock and roll. Whether you use the simple upgrade procedure, if you're going from, let's say, 0.77 to 0.7.8, or you have to use the flatten and reinstall method, upgrading GP2040CE can seem a little daunting, but it doesn't have to be. If you follow the steps in this guide, you should have no problem whether you know you have to take this approach or that approach. And if you find that even after you do the flatten and reinstall that things are kind of buggy and weird, I'd just say try it again. Go for the complete flattening, you know, unplug, replug, do what you have to do, and that should clear things up. Sometimes it's just the second time that does it. I'm not sure why. Anyhow, this has been Zev for Teach Me GP2040 CE. Hey y'all, it's that time again. I've got a cat, I'm petting him, he's happy. He likes you to like, comment, and subscribe. You know the YouTube refrain. If this information helped you get your GP2040 CE board updated, hey, I appreciate that like. 
And you know, if you have questions or comments, you know, leave them down below as usual. I try to get to them within a couple days. And finally, if you want to see more content out of me, then you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks. And if you don't, he's going to get you.